Hey, it's Sarah with House Copper. And today we are going to be finishing up the second half of the box that we made when um, we did how to build a box. So here's our box, the lower part of the box. And here's our upper part of the box. Um, I wanna show you something that I decided to do on this one just because um, it's gonna make it easier for folding purposes. Um, but if you can see the flap here is diagonal, so it almost becomes a point. Depending on how long the sides are, that this would not be a point, it would be flat. Um, but that is gonna allow for tucking um, underneath things to be easier. And we are going to be bending um, this the opposite way that we bent um, the bottom part of the box. And that's just because I don't want it to get, this is not meant to be one of those boxes where um, you they get kind of stuck together. This is meant to be one of those boxes where um, it just slides on and off. So it's not airtight or anything like that. It's more of a decorative box. Um, if you were doing a cartridge box, like I mentioned in the previous video, you would want the cover and the bottom to fit together much more snugly and almost catch just a little bit so that obviously it's not opening up. Or you can always add like a hasp and do um, and do a, an actual closure as well if you are worried about that. So we're gonna use a lot of the same tools we use to build the bottom, but I'm just gonna show you um, the opposite way of folding and how these come together and um, the finished product. And um, you'll have how to build a box. So we're going uh, back to the bar folder. Here we go. All right, we're back at the bar folder and I think you can see this. So um, whatever you do um, right now in terms of um, and my bar folder keeps slipping, so you're gonna see me kind of like help down some of the, the seams here. But um, whatever you're gonna do, you're going to be bending the um, bending opposite uh, what you what you did last time um, in terms of which direction these these edges go. Instead of going to the inside like we did last time, they're gonna go to the outside when we get to the um, the 90 degree angle part. Um, so that's that side. We're gonna do this. I always um, get frustrated because um, my bar folder jumps, like this needs to be tightened and I'm too lazy to um, do that right now. <laughs> There's just too many things going on and it's just not worth my time to adjust my tools when there's just, you know, summer. All right, anyway, that doesn't matter. Okay, so next, I'm gonna bring you around and I'm gonna show you how I do opposite of what I did with the base. All right, so we have our, these are actually an eighth of an inch instead of a quarter of an inch, because this is a smaller piece. Um, in terms of what I folded over. But now, instead of folding these folded edges to the inside, like we did the box, I'm folding them to the outside. It's really all that I'm doing differently. But I have to adjust to a... I just realized I uh, did the short corners, not even thinking. I'm just doing, and I should have done the long sides. Never mind. I guess it'll work. So again, now funny because I have a smaller surface um, that I bent. This part is actually harder to do than it was on the big piece. But you do need to flatten these out in order in order to do the next part. Just I really want to, you really want to get these uh, flange, you know, the flanges underneath um, or they'll slip out on you and then that really sucks. It's so cute. Such a dainty little cover. All right, back to the bottoming steak. As I've said before, 
if your um, the length of space allows, and actually this one may, huh, because it's the cover and slightly bigger, you can uh, use one of these instead of a bottoming stick if you don't have a bottoming stick. Now, I have to make sure that, and actually this is, I think, gonna be too big. Find the tiny pliers. Oh, look, no. there's one right here. If you need to finish uh, any detail work to make sure that your uh, lap seam edges are gonna be in, you almost wanna go just slightly more than 90 degrees to ensure that it, they will clear the edges and uh, slide into where they need to slide. Okay. Then, this is the other way you can do this, though of course now that I did that, it's just, just small enough that I don't think it's gonna work, but you get the idea. You take this in and bend it up the full 90 degrees and it'll go really easy for you. I put in my, my uh, edges a little too much, um, which is fine, but you get the idea. You'd use that tool if the length of your face allows it and you just bend it up. The crease you've already made will make that job way easier even though you've work hardened. Um, the copper, the bend is already kind of predisposed to bend back. But we're gonna do this again. Like I said in the past, I really like using a rawhide for this process because it, um, uh, it doesn't scratch your copper and dent it as bad as a metal hammer. And I guess you can't see this, can you? Huh. We're gonna we're gonna bring you down just a wee bit. Maybe not. This is why someday I'll have a videographer. Right. Or I'll just get my kids in here, right? You guys can have shaky videography and complain about not being able to hear me because my kids, you know have like a finger over the sound or something ridiculous. All right, the moment of truth. After I've hammered this now, I haven't soldered the edges. That will come, but I wanna actually make sure that we're all solid to go. And, um, That'll help when I solder, but you really want to make sure that the corners of your base and the corners of your top are as tight as possible. So um, I actually, if you saw, I just went in and I kind of messed around a little bit with the, the base. And what I'm really trying to do is, is make it as square as possible because if it's bending outward at all, this fit is going to be impossible. So... Why do I always do this on these videos and not know if it's gonna turn out? And then I like freak the hell out. It's so hard to do this with seams that move. Oh, and uh, and it fits. I it fits. The math works. It always amazes me when the math works. So um, yeah, like I said, solder will have to happen, but I'll show you how that looks. I guess it is gonna be a tighter fit. How lovely! And what'll be really fun is. Um, yeah, it's a cute little box. And what's gonna go inside actually, um, I'll show you, are what I'm making for a customer, their belt buckles. Um, he ordered a bunch of them. So they'll go in here on a bed of um, velvet. So anyway, if you, um, I'll have a quick photo at the end of this on what, um, what I have or what it looks like. But in the meantime, um, if there's anything else you want to see on this channel, please leave it in the comments. If you have thoughts, questions, uh, anything like that about the box, things like that, let me know. I always like to learn or get new ideas from you guys too. Um, and find me on Facebook, find me on Instagram under House Copper, and um, pick up Copper Iron and Clay if you haven't yet and want to know way too much about tools and cooking because I put way too much of that in there. And uh, yeah, until next time. I hope you have a good rest of the week and a great ongoing summer, and I will see you soon.